hello friends welcome to my channel maths tutorial quizit and uh, today we are going to continue the solution of fifth sem uh, physics honors uh, uh, quantum mechanics question paper c11 said by divi university okay so before we start please subscribe the channel and uh, hit the bell icon so that uh, uh, you get notified uh, when new video will be uploaded and share with your friends and uh, hit the thumbs up button as well and uh, in the last video part, uh, this is part 4 right this is part 4 and in part 3 we have solved up to question number 9 actually there were two questions in question number 9 uh, first one then or the next one so we have solved the first one so next part from the next part we are going to uh, start and uh, sorry for that long because of my health condition i took a long break so so from today uh, <clears throat> i i hope that i will be able to upload uh, videos uh, in regular intervals so now uh, let's start so here is the next of question number nine uh, that's uh, here you see what is the assumed hill component of the Schrodinger equation uh, wave equation of hydrogen atom and obtain the solution and normalize the eigenfunction what is the significance of quantum number predicted by it so this is the <coughs> azimuthal wave equation azimuthal component of the uh, you know Schrodinger wave equation of uh, hydrogen atom right so we have already uh, discussed uh, those uh, all the three parts that uh, of the Schrodinger equation that we have obtained uh, for hydrogen atom in the previous question uh, in the last part part three we have already discussed the three parts so here uh, this is the one of those three parts and we need to find a solution here so we have assumed the solution is f of phi uh, which is a e to the power so let me enlarge it a e to the power i where i is a complex number m l phi so here this m l is the you know quantum number right and predicted by it this is magnetic uh, quantum number right so we're gonna talk about this uh, later okay so this is two right and this is equation number one we have taken so now uh, here a is a constant okay remember a is a constant now you see the wave function should have a single value for a given value of phi and should not change if phi is uh, phi is changed by two pi radians okay uh, what is the reason behind it because this because this bring us back to the same position right and the condition for this requirement is so this is the condition so f of phi plus 2 pi should be again f of phi right so if f of phi is equal to this this is the f of phi right then uh, f of phi plus twice pi should be a e to the power i m l phi plus twice phi right twice pi sorry twice pi this should be the f of phi plus twice pi and we have already got that this two f of uh, phi plus twice pi and f of phi must be equal so that's why these two results must be equal right so that is what we have written here you can see uh, sorry uh, that is what we have written here right uh, what we have written a e to the power i m l that is magnetic quantum number uh, phi plus 2 pi is equal to a e to the power minus i m l uh, phi right that is the question number equation number four right and here you see this term a e to the power uh, i m l phi is not zero right and let us divide the uh, this equation right uh, uh, if you divide this equation number four by this term 
right um, this term means by this a e to the power i ml phi then you will get this equation that is e to the power twice pi uh, i ml is equal to one you're gonna get this equation and by Euler's equation that e to the power i theta is given by this result uh, so what we have got by Euler's equation we have got e to the power i theta is equal to cos theta plus i sine theta and uh, according to this formula so from this equation we should get this result right this is cos 2 pi ml plus i sine 2 pi ml is equal to 1 so equating this real and uh, real parts on the two sides of this equation okay so here one is real number so that must be equal to the real part cos 2 pi ml then you will get this equation cos 2 pi ml is equal to 1 right so what we have done so there are two parts in this equation cos 2 pi ml so ml then plus i sine 2 pi ml equal to 1 so this is the real part and this is the imaginary part right and here one is real and imaginary part is zero here zero into i you can consider so one must be equal to this that's how we have got this equation that is cos 2 pi ml is equal to 1 right so what will be the solution of this its solution should be 2 pi ml that's going to be equal to 0 plus minus 2 pi comma plus minus 4 pi and so on right so that means so let's go to next uh, slide here from here so ml should be either zero or it may be positive or negative integer okay so what is ml here ml is the orbital magnetic quantum number this is the you know orbital uh, quantum number uh, that predicted by this then now let us normalize so here the function we have considered that f so its conjugate should be f star and this is the normalization condition right so we know the normalization condition of a wave function phi is given by uh, integration of phi phi star uh, is equal to one that's what we have uh, already got that right so we have used this condition here uh, or integrating from zero to pi okay to pi right so this is equation number six so what we have taken f is equal to f is equal to we have taken that uh, f of phi is equal to we have taken a e to the power i m l phi right that is what we have taken and uh, that's why f this uh, sorry f star of phi should be its complex conjugate a e to the power minus i m l phi this is the complex conjugate right so hope you have understood this and if we use these values here if we use this here then what we should get so then we should get this result right we should get this result so what we have done we have used these two values of phi uh, sorry uh, f of phi and f star of phi in this equation so we have got in the next piece we have got this result so that is that is implies that implies this equation so a a star so here you see a is constant so a and a star that must be equal to uh, the both of them uh, must be equal to each other right they they must be equal to each other right <clears throat> because constant suppose you have a constant number two so it's complex conjugate that will be again two because two uh, you can consider this way two plus i zero and the complex conjugate will be 2 minus i into 0 so this part is 0 here also 0 so equal so hope you know these things so then then if you multiply these two right so you will get e to the power 0 that is equal to uh, that is equal to 1 1 into d phi 
integration of 1 d5 is equal to 1 here and if you integrate and if you put the limits here then you will get a square 2 pi is equal to 1 and which is equal to uh, which implies a is equal to this right so now use this values uh, value of uh, equation number a in equation number 2 uh, if you use the value of a in equation number 2 uh, wh where is the equation number 2 let's go back to equation number 2 so this is the equation number 2 right this is the equation number 2 if you put the value of a here then you will get this uh, result right and this is the required solution so hope you have understood these things now uh, let's go to next question so here is the question number 10 so you know the radial part of wave function for hydrogen in the ground state is given by this right and uh, we need to find the expression for ground state energy of hydrogen atom uh, at ground state uh, here n is equal to 1 l is equal to 0 so now let me write the given information first this is the answer okay that radial part of the wave function is given by this right? that is already given in the question and the radial part of the time independent stored in the wave equation for this case should be this right so here second order derivative of capital r with respect to small r uh, let's find these two uh, derivative of r with respect to small r so value of r is given this is the value of r if you differentiate it uh, if you differentiate it once with respect to small r then what you should get 2 by at n or to the power 3 by 2 uh, into minus 1 by n or e to the power minus r by a naught right so we know the derivative of suppose we know that d dx of uh, e to the power m x is nothing but m e to the power m x right we have used that here okay so hope you have understood these things now you see <coughs> if you differentiate uh, let me simplify this that uh, will be equal to a to the power 3 by 2 into a to the power 1 that's going to be a to the power 5 by 2 right that's going to be 5 by 2 e to the power minus r by n if you differentiate it again if you find a second order derivative with respect to r then this minus will be plus right plus 2 by now again it will be 7 so 7 by 2 e to the power minus r a naught if you differentiate it again using the same formula okay so here you see this is the radial part of the Schrodinger equation and for ground state l is 0 so this part will be equal to 0 so that's why this equation is reduced to this form and now let us use these two results dr by d small r here and this one here and doing so we have got this right and let us divide the both side by this right or you can say let us multiply a to the power 7 by a naught to the power 7 by 2 into 2 on both side right on this side as well as, as well as on this side okay a naught 7 by 2 by 2 right a naught to the power 7 by 2 by 2 so doing so uh, what we will get let me clean this okay doing so we get this result right and uh, if you simplify if you simplify this equation uh, it will take uh, the form of uh, 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 we we have simplified and uh, rearranged the terms the, to get this form so hope you will get the simplification part you know being a student of bsc those kind of simplification should be very simple for you and you see uh, the left hand side this part is uh, left hand side is independent of r if so then uh, both sides of this equation this side and this side both side of this equation must be equal to zero that's why we have taken this uh, left hand side only this is equal to zero right this is equal to zero if you simplify this then you should get this equation right now you see a naught is the radius of first Bohr orbit and this is the value of that right and using that result here uh, this is a naught so here 1 by a naught square 
so using that value here uh, we have got this energy right so this is the expression required expression for energy so hope you have understood this now remaining questions will be solved in the next video so hope you have enjoyed this video so if you have enjoyed this uh, please uh, hit the like button and share with your friends and uh, you know uh, if you're new to my channel subscribe the channel and uh, you know new year is coming so from tomorrow uh, 2023 will be starting so very very happy new year so thank you see you in the next video